Hi, I'm Dr. R.J. Burr. Kristen Salinas. And we're with Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center, where pain is complex and frustrating. With customized manual medicine and movement coaching, Reach takes the guesswork out of healing. Do more than relieve pain, be unstoppable. All right, Kristen, we're here today because we're going to share with our audience um, the tips and tricks that we use, our self-care strategies we use for ourselves. Uh, we talk about a lot with our patients and clients that it's not, we don't have magic hands or a magic wand, right? There's, we can do some great treatments and therapies, but really 80% of it or so is about the guidance and the self-care, self-help strategies and the problem solving we help people with. And we do give a lot of different types of strategies depending on the person in the situation. And we got a question, well, what exactly do you guys use? Because you ha they have to think that we use some of the stuff that we teach, right? Which is absolutely true. So today we're gonna share with you some of our self-help strategies and what we use to help um, mitigate or, I shouldn't say treat, but really help maintain our, our, our physical function and even our mental health. So I'll start with you, Kristen. I guess, uh, let me ask you, uh, is there anything recently maybe you're dealing with? And if so, what, are you, what have you been doing to combat that? Sure, so for the first time in my life, I've started to experience lower back pain. It's the, I've never experienced it before. I know a good chiropractor. I, I heard of one, I heard he's all right. So uh, for the first time ever, I started getting pain between, um, in my, my sacroiliac joint, most people would know that as the pain right in their waistband. It presents as kind of a, an intense burning if I've been sitting for too long. So I really realized that it's, it's from lying down and sitting on my low back. I think we all know that position, you know. <laughs> no, nobody does that, right? right? Just hanging out, right? So it, it, it's really intense and it doesn't always go away quickly. Right. Real quick, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think it's ironic about that. Like sitting like how I am right now is very comfortable. And I joke about this because this is like a normal sitting posture. I don't think anyone watching this right now would look at me and be like, oh my God, that's so horrible for a Cairo to be doing. But really right now, my low back is not supported. I probably shouldn't be doing this for a long period of time because sitting's not inherently bad. It's just that we do it a lot. So if I were to hold my back in the position it's in right now and stand up, it's going to look like this. Ready? All right. I'm sure if I came to meet you today in the office, right, you'd be like, who the hell is this guy? Right? I don't trust this chiropractor. Exactly. And that's how we sit. Really, if I want to be really perf good about it, I'm going to arch my back and actually this is taxing doing this but I'm gonna put my back in a little bit of an arch to to maintain this upright posture. Doing this, I'm gonna get tired. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the things that's helped me through this bout of low back pain the most is just mindfulness of what position is causing the most aggravation. So I have narrowed it down pretty specifically to my couch. Okay. It's new. Um, so, couch is never, those are never a problem. I know, right? And with this quarantine, I have found myself sitting on it, working way more than normal. So, you know, my laptop on my lap, down here, and I go to get up, right. and there's this intense burn through my lower back. Oh, I'm just sure low back, not your neck at all. No. <laughs> and, you know, there's no neck problems or pains going on at all. Yeah. So I'm sure many of you have experienced this discomfort through the quarantine, so we wanted to take a second to talk about what I have done to help myself and alleviate some of the pain and discomfort. So first and foremost is just awareness, realizing that that position is my aggravant, realizing that my couch is the aggravant, and resisting the urge to do any uh, sort of desk work or laptop work while sitting on my couch. Mm -hmm. Get up off of your couch and go to your kitchen table, go stand up at your kitchen counter, find your desk in your office if you have one, clear all the junk off of it and actually sit down in a proper chair where you can support your body a little bit better has made a huge difference for overcoming this. Right, how simple is that? Just change your position, change your workspace, don't conform to your workspace, conform your workspace to you. You are more important than the, than the spot you're working at. I couldn't have said that better. Conform your workspace to you. Now, not everybody has an at-home desk and maybe your kitchen table or your counter isn't ideal. There are tons of workarounds um, if, you, if you have some creativity, you can find a way of overcoming this and working around it. So even sitting on the ground with a pillow underneath you mm -hmm. and your uh, laptop or computer propped up on an ottoman or your computer sitting on your couch and you sitting on the floor instead of the other way around can be really helpful 
to getting through some of those long days. Yeah, for sure. I, I love that. I think the change of position is phenomenal. Whether you want to sit, um, I make sure I say this right, crisscross applesauce or cross-legged. We can't use the old term anymore. Um, uh, you, you know, sitting in that position or even lying down, uh, I like to describe like a little kid watching Saturday morning cartoons. That may, may, may make sense to our baby boomers. Uh, not to any Generation Z or Millennials because everything's up on a uh, wall now. But, you know, lying down, uh, prone on elbows like you're reading a book and work on your computer like that for a little bit. I mean, you're not going to be there for too long you'll get you'll start straining after a while. But it's just change of position, right? Our bodies are meant to move for dynamic beings. We're not meant to sit in one position or meant to be in any position for a long period of time. But it just so happens that we, we do the sitting part a lot. Absolutely. So... The first thing that's really helped me overcome some of this bout of low back pain is being aware of what position has encouraged the pain and then working smarter about not getting into that position in the first place. I am classically a headstrong person where I can get working and then hours go by and I don't even realize it. So not putting myself in that position to begin with has been huge. Awesome. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, is there anything else or is that kind of the main one you've been doing right now? Uh, so that's the main thing that I've been doing, but the secondary thing I've been doing is getting up more frequently and intentionally putting some mobility into my lower back. So whether I'm sitting on the chair or I decide to lie on the floor, arching my back and then tucking under, really intentionally moving through that range okay. without shifting my weight. So staying So really going forward and back, not side to side. So essentially what you're saying is you're twerking in your seat. Yeah. So uh, when I'm twerking in my seat, I have a tendency to want to drop my weight to one side. And yes, the classic on sitting one on one side versus the other. Yeah. Yes. So I have had to be very conscious about being upright on both sides of my butt, you know, kind of fluffing it all out and, and being even on those sit bones before I go into the motion. But then just adding some mobility back if I've been sitting for a long time has been huge. So through this quarantine, what are you doing to keep mentally and physically sane since we can't treat people in the office? That's a great question. Uh, mentally, I'll, I'll go brief on that. I think it's uh, what I've been doing is just making sure to change my environment as much as possible. So coming into the office, obviously staying, you know, our physical or social distancing as much as possible. We've already been around each other, so I think this is not that big of a deal. I don't think we're six feet. It, yeah, right. We should probably, we should probably separate. <laughs> we gotta separate. Right. The um, but also focusing on stuff. We work in the business so much, so it's working outside of it and doing other things and just being able to uh, put some variety in the day, some structure, but also being able to change up the environment. I think is really important for me. Just being able to go out and go for a walk and doing some simple things, especially with the the weather getting nice now. So at least you don't have the snow we're dealing with. Uh, physically speaking, I'm doing a lot more computer work working on the business. And so I'm finding myself, I have a standing desk, but what happens is I'm, I'm on, an, on an angle um, because I'm in my office. And what tends to happen is my mousing arm, I start to do this a lot. And what I've been noticing or I've been doing is actually um, something that you taught me about, which is doing the body scan. And I use these stickers as a reminder. So before I go into that, uh, would you mind sharing very quickly like what the body scan is? Absolutely. So you can't begin to change things you don't realize that you're doing. So it behooves us to take a few seconds to check into our body and realize what position we're in. So depending on where your complaint or major ailment is determines if we're going to start at the top of your body or if we're going to start at the bottom. But either way, the idea is to take a few seconds and recognize how you're holding weight on that part of your body or what that part of your body is doing. So desk workers might start at the top. You might realize that you're clenching your jaw and pushing your tongue to the front of your mouth or to the roof of your mouth. So take a second to just realize what your mouth is doing. Take a second to realize where your shoulders are. Have you been working? Is it time to let those back down? And then just realizing where your rib cage is. So if, if, if your um, sternum, if you were Iron Man and you had an emblem in the front of your sternum, is it pointed up, is it pointed straight, or is it pointed down? So once we've taken a few seconds to scan our body and determine what position we're in, then beginning to adjust those things. I like that, the Iron Man logo. I've used the Superman one, but hey, pick your superhero, right? Um, the, so what I've been using the body scan for specifically is my shoulder here. So you can use it, yes, posture, breath, uh, where's your, are you clenching your jaw? Whatever type of postural thing you can do, you do, you can use this body scan as an idea to change it, to bring heightened awareness. So 
I've been using a sticker and I've gotten these reach, we've got these reach stickers now we can give patients and clients to help them with this. I took one and I stuck it in the bottom left of my computer screen. So now when I see that thing, which you can imagine is quite often, I see that and I'm like, oh crap. And I think, wow, I've been doing this. Because you'll be surprised how long you can go doing some of these patterns without realizing it uh, until you physically do something different, whether it's just getting up to use the bathroom. So by looking at that little logo there, what I'm doing is, I'm relaxing my shoulder. When I don't do that, what happens is I get a lot of this. I start using this muscle here that, hey honey, rub my shoulders because they're achy muscle, right? That's attached into your neck. You use your neck as an anchor. What happens? You start getting neck pain and doing stuff like this. Yes, there's some treatments and self-help stuff you can do. Like I do this one quite a bit and tuck, look back, wiggle, 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 or hands, earmuffs over the ears, elbows back and get the mid back. That's extremely helpful, especially for doing this all the time, which, hey, we should probably be a little more upright as you spoke about earlier. And so um, I find that instead of just trying to treat it when it's a problem, if I'm more aware of it ahead of time, I can prevent it from happening in the first place. And it's been tremendously helpful for me as I'm spending more time from the computer. You know, that's a really stellar point that we often need an external cue to help us become more aware of something that we're doing. So these little stickers provide us a way to recognize and tune into our bodies so that this becomes a habit. We are so used in society to putting our awareness to things outside of us, the to-do list, our kids, the weather, the phone, all sorts of things takes our attention away from our bodies. So these little stickers serve to remind us to pay attention first internally because you can't pour from an empty cup. So if you've drained your body of everything it has because you've paid attention so much to the outside world, there's no more that you can give. So these little stickers serve to remind you, put your awareness back inside for a minute, adjust yourself, then go on. 100% agree. Uh, so I, found, I hope that you guys found this was valuable, our experience of the stuff that we use to teach other people and how we're actually utilizing it. And this is the reason why we teach these things because we know it works and we utilize it ourselves. So uh, we have to really thoroughly test and vet and use things for us to really give them to the people um, that are trusting in our advice. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, we, again, are Dr. R.J. Burr. Kristen Salinas. Of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center where we believe pain is complex and frustrating. But with manual medicine and movement coaching, reach takes the guesswork out of healing, do more than relief pain, be unstoppable.